Welcome to Health Discoveries, East Carolina University's premier television series that showcases discovery, scholarship, leadership, and service, as demonstrated by our faculty experts. Health Discoveries explores a variety of health topics and the ways through which East Carolina University's transforming the lives of Eastern North Carolina and beyond. Today we have Mike McCammon, Associate Director of the Human Performance Lab with us to tell us a little bit about how East Carolina is working to address the problem of sedentary behavior. Hi Mike. Hey Sam. Tell us a little bit about your work here. Well over the years we've been actively involved in trying to promote physical activity. I know you talk with Joe Homard and you understand the science behind exercise and how it impacts on skeletal muscle and knowing that the next step is how do we get people to become more physically active and what, and what do we know about it? Well, we know that if we look at risk factors for heart disease, the primary risk factor most people say is smoking mm -hmm. or being obese is inactivity. Mm -hmm. It's the most prevalent risk factor we have and not only does it impact on heart disease, it impacts on diabetes, cancer risk, hypertension, stroke. So we know that inactivity is a significant health problem. So what we're trying to do is help people understand that you can get benefit by being becoming more physically active. Now, what most people get concerned about, they think about physical activity and exercise. So in order to get health benefit from exercise, you gotta run marathons, you gotta put an hour a day in, seven days a week you have to sweat, and you look like most people, they're just frowning and making faces. And right. say, it doesn't look like a lot of fun no, sometimes. No, no, you'd be asking, yeah. well, why do you exercise? Because it feels so good to quit. Yeah. Uh, right. So what we need to do is we need to help people understand that, you know, Physical activity is even different than exercise. It's just moving your body through space, expending energy, and it doesn't have to be all at once. You can break it up during the day. But what can happen is, if a person can accumulate 30 minutes a day of moderate physical activity on most, if not all days of the week, they can derive significant health benefit. Now, What's so significant or good about that is that benefit happens independent of weight loss. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we try to help people understand is we always associate obesity with increased health risk, and it is. Mm -hmm. But there's also a subset of people who are overweight or obese that aren't at weight-related health risk. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because they are physically active or they're physically fit. So one of the concepts we talk about is obesity risk is not universal. Mm -hmm. You can be obese and you can have significant health risk, but you can also be obese and not have risk if you're physically active. So one of the things that we try to do in the, the classes that we teach in our lab, it's we try to promote, you know, physical activity in a way that will engage people become more physically active. You know, will they have fun? Well, we'd like them to have fun because sure. if it's fun, they're more likely to do it. You're a psychologist, you, sure. know, you know about you know, behaviors and things like that. But the idea is, can we help people understand the importance of an active lifestyle and use that as an outcome variable for success and not things like weight loss? Mm -hmm. Because if we look at weight loss success, you know as well as I yeah. do, People lose weight, but they gain it back. Yeah, the sustainability is the challenge. Oh, it's just terrible. And so if people gauge their success on losing and maintaining the weight loss, then it's just going to be hard to convince them that, uh, you know, to, to make other changes. But if we can move that back and help focus on just being more physically active, then I think we can really have a positive impact on the health behavior of people. Absolutely. And I know East Carolina is very engaged with the community in terms of getting the folks exercising and, and the role of the Human Performance Lab. How, do, how does a lab work and how does it serve uh, its constituents? Oh, great. Uh, since 1982, we've had what we call the Cardiovascular Risk Assessment Program. Okay. And over that time, we've assessed over 10,000 Eastern North Carolinians, primarily Eastern North Carolinians. And what we do is we evaluate their cardiovascular risk factors. They see a physician, they take a maximal treadmill test. And what we do is we get all those data together and we develop an exercise program, one for them that will hopefully help impact in areas that they want to 
you know, they've set some, self, some goals up for themselves and can we impact on those areas. But also, too, what the, the program does, it takes away the I'm concerned about exercise. What's going to happen to me if I exercise? I sure. haven't done anything for 20 years, and is it safe for me to exercise? So we can take that concern out. And then in our lab, then we have opportunities for people to exercise. And what really makes it unique is we have a large group of students, both undergraduate and graduate students, that work with the people who come in the lab. Mm -hmm. And so it's just this environment that encourages activity in a safe environment. And you know, we don't look at you know people you know needing to run marathons to get sure. benefit or losing large amounts of weight. We want them to come in and have that exercise success. And then from that, build on that. We have a program right now with obese adolescents. Um, and we have students that work with these, they serve as exercise mentors. I did this with a colleague, Dr. Tom Radicke. And what we do is these adolescents come in, we pair them with undergraduate students, and the undergraduate students work one-on-one -on -one as ex exercise leaders, and they help these kids have exercise success. And what we see is remarkable. They may not lose weight, they'll lose body fat, which mm -hmm. is a positive outcome, but things like their blood lipids, their cholesterol improves, uh, triglycerides, glucose levels, insulin levels improve, independent of weight loss. So again, what we really want to promote is weight loss is great, and now that's mm -hmm. an outcome variable people really want to have happen, but if we can again get them to understand how exercise could impact on those health indices, then I think, you know, maybe the weight loss can follow the exercise. Sure. Well, I'm really struck by the state-of-the-art aspect that both the uh, the analysis and then the support goes, goes thereafter, whether we're talking about uh, adolescents or we're talking about um, um, adults. The, the, the lab seems to provide all kinds of services that meet the needs of a whole host of citizens of our area. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I think we probably have the most active lab on campus. Mm -hmm. We have about 150 undergraduate students that work there, mm -hmm. you know, that go through there every, every semester. We have four, I think, right now, active research projects mm -hmm. going on that work with graduate students. Uh, then we have community people that come in who want to exercise there or an assessment or exercise program. So it's a lab that opens at 6.30 and closes at 7. And then after 7, that's when the adolescents come in and start sure. exercising. Well, I'm struck by the fact that your lab does it all. I mean, you all are the real deal. You're doing service. You're doing research. Mm -hmm. You're doing teaching. You've got an engaged uh, group of of students involved, it just sounds like it's the ideal place and really represents everything we're trying to do uh, in healthcare and, and as a university. So, uh, I mean, it's an excellent opportunity for everyone and, and a win win win. Oh, yeah, I think so too. It's a fun place to work too. Yeah. Tell us what the future for the health, Human Performance Lab is. Well, we'd like to continue to do what we're doing. We'd love to have a larger facility uh, impact on more people. But what we're doing right now, I think we're doing wh what we need to be doing. We're identifying people that need some help. We're helping students get valuable experience working mm -hmm. with a variety of uh, individuals from, from kids all the way to adults. We're helping our graduate students uh, complete the thesis portion of their sure. degree. Sure. And then that community service too. What we do is we provide a service that is unique in yeah. the area. Our human performance lab and what we've done over the years I don't think there's anything like it. In the, I know there's not anything like it in the state and probably not in the uh, eastern region because we have impacted on so many different yeah. individuals over the years that uh, it, is, it, it, it is just a unique program. It is a unique program in a special place and uh, congratulations on all of you and your colleagues work there. Okay, well, thank, thank you for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you. Thanks. Be sure and join us for another episode of Health Discoveries at East Carolina University. I'm Dr. Sam Sears. Thank you for watching. Go Pirates!